The first 100 people to bring an unwrapped toy to Boro Hall gets a free ticket to Disney on Ice. Now, like I said, that man is at Ryder's Hospital with some critical injuries other than his amputations. There is still one man here trapped and missing. His family has been here since it's all started around the clock, begging crew members not to stop looking. Taking a perfect selfie is an art. First you need your phone, then you extend your arm, get pretty, and snap. And all you have left to do is get your picture, put it on Instagram, and upload. Nickel, quarter, penny, dime, help me pay these bills of mine. Nickel, quarter, penny, dime, help me pay these bills of mine. Nickel, quarter, penny, dime, help me pay these bills of mine. Hectuba Hestia is a witch living in Staten Island with her partner Gary and seven cats. Today she's casting a spell in search of money. See, Gary is dying and they can't afford to pay the medical bills. With my husband um, right now, he developed uh, uh, stage three pancreatic cancer. My passion and love and emotion, wet and blood, I call upon you now to witness this rite and aid me. Hectuba is a high priestess with the Wiccan Family Temple Academy of Pagan Studies. The first ever witch school in New York City opened in 2007. She teaches lawyers, doctors, teachers, and even children. Wicca is a modern pagan religion that focuses on connecting with the natural world. Ewan Cameron is a professor of religious studies at Columbia University. Wicca movements come out of a desire to have a spirituality which is uh, earth-based and which is uh, more gender equal. Uh, one of the things that I'm able to do is when I talk to deity, deity responds. Uh, that's one of my uh, abilities is that I am able to connect to, the, uh, to deity. There are about one million Wiccans in the United States, making it the fifth largest religion in the country. New York is, is a welcoming place. It's a place where people are not judged. It's a place where there are no social pressures to conform to one particular tradition. When you think of the stereotypical witch, like the kind you see on TV, Hectuba doesn't deviate far from the norm. She has it all, magic wands, robes, crystal balls, and even a broomstick. Not all witches use it. It also can be used as a form of protection when it's up against the door. Uh, but essentially, it's used to cleanse space. She means spiritually. In her mundane life, as she calls it, Hectuba works as a legal secretary and goes by her Jewish birth name, Arlene Barbara Fried. Fifteen years ago, Hectuba grew tired of the constraints of Orthodox Judaism and rediscovered herself through a more liberal religion like Wicca. Um, I don't have any guilt about the things that I do. Um, you know, I do have uh, essentially somebody that I see outside of my marriage. Uh, we'll just say a friend with benefits. This, my friend helps me to relax and helps me get my mind off of everything. Within Judaism, I would not be able to do such a thing. In fact, Gary and Hectuba met on a fetish website. Well, are you okay if I say anything because okay. of your because of what you uh, do? I'm I'm fine. Okay, as we're far as we're I involved know. with uh, BDSM. Cool. Okay, we're active as... in the BDSM community. BDSM aside, Hectuba has faith that her magic will help Gary. Uh, hoping for the best, but uh, you know, love for him to get better. We're hoping for the best for him. Great mother. We have a spell around me. Protect me. Okay. Stephen Baldivia, Columbia TV News. Love me. Six right days now. and still not giving up hope. Give him strength at this time, a family search for their son begins with a daily prayer. 18-year-old Christian Aguilar went missing Thursday not far from the University of Florida campus, leaving his father devastated. This, that means a gift from God. That's what my son is. It, it was my first gift from God. And now he's praying for a second gift from God, to find his son alive. A prayer he believed was answered. A signal from the college freshman's phone bringing officials to this field, north of the Gainesville airport, miles away where the search initially began. Gainesville police arrested Aguilar's longtime friend Pedro Bravo, who officials say is their number one suspect. Bravo admitted to beating up Christian and leaving him alone and unconscious in the woods. It's like a never-ending nightmare. Aguilar's girlfriend, who asked to keep her face off camera, says the two
two were good friends. She also happens to be Pedro's ex-girlfriend. Initial media reports say the altercation was over her, but she says that just isn't true. That Christian and Pedro got along great. I'm just so confused and so, so, um, stuck for words. Bravo was last seen with Aguilar outside of Gainesville Best Buy in this surveillance photo. Charged with depriving a person of medical care, a third degree felony, and possibly facing murder charges, Bravo is staying behind bars. In the courtroom, Aguilar's family begging for Bravo's cooperation, wanting to know where he is. Pedro Bravo's roommate wrote a column for the university newspaper describing everything he knew about his roommate. He says, the last day Aguilar was seen, Bravo wrote an Oscar Wilde quote on his whiteboard, reading, Death must be so beautiful, to lie in the soft brown earth with the grasses waving above one's head, and listen to silence. Meanwhile, hundreds of volunteers canvassed the wooden area for hours of no luck. We spent at least uh, seven hours searching today. The dog had to take a few breaks. We continued heavy bush, uh, lots of shrubbery. We came up with some encampments, uh, but no, uh, no further leads at this time. Back here in Miami, in Doral Academy, the school where both Chris and Pedro graduated from, his peers are using Twitter to help find him, using hashtag HelpFindChris. In the South Bronx and Webster Avenue in 169th Street sits a store that caters to some controversial religions. It's the original products Botanica, and it's been around since the 1950s. The store sells religious items you won't find in your everyday convenience store. Where you are here has been like the uh, Home Depot of spirituality for everybody. Chris Ochun is an employee at the store and a priest of his religion. Um, we have candles, like in the store that you see downstairs, it doesn't directly go for just Santeros. This is a universal metaphysical store for, that, that sells to just, just about anybody who seeks, you know, spiritual products. All types of people come here, from Catholics to non-believers. But one of the driving forces for this botanica is what they offer to over 100,000 New York Santeros, or people who practice Santeria. The botanica may look like just a retail store, but it's more than just that. In the basement, there's employees that manufacture many of the store's supplies. And we also do a lot of manufacturing down here of a lot of our products, like the incense, the baths, uh, the oils, um, the herbs. We put together like herb packages. Chris Ochun runs the Santeria section in the Botanica. Santeria is a religion in which practitioners believe saints, or rishas as they call them, will communicate with them through prayer, or even possession to help them guide through moments of their life. They're so... It's, uh, they're so beautiful and so important to me. The Rishas are the same way. They're here to help us and guide us, and there are certain rituals to help you know, achieve certain things that you may seek in your life. Some people would consider that magic, but everything in this world is magic. Ochun heads a group of readers, people who say we're born with a gift to see a person's past, present, and future by talking to the spirits. I don't like to use the term like psychic or anything like that. I am a spiritualist. I believe in uh, universal power, universal being God, so I basically have this gift that I believe God has given us where I could read people, tell them about their lives, tell them about things going on in their lives. I could also see spirits and entities that may be roaming. Not all the time, it's not something like I'm like, you know, walking with the walking dead or anything. He has a team of about five readers who charge about $30 per session. Alex Inle, who is also Santeria priest, okay, is one of them. It's like a connection. It's like you could talk. It's like a family thing. It's like you could talk, you could express yourself, and you could cry, and you could, because that's yours. That's like yours, and they're hearing you. It's a beautiful energy. It's very beautiful. It's like incredible. Alex says he can communicate with the Saint Anaisa, who rules love and money. He many times helps people no, with broken heart different. get their exes. Okay, give it time. Don't rush things for things to come the right way. Yvonne is a regular. She's trying a love potion to get her boyfriend back for the third time. I'm trying to undo the damage that was done because right now um, the person was turned so that I'm like his enemy when I'm not. So I'm just trying to undo that and bring him back and let him see what he's always seen the good in me. Like, I just believe I'm a very faithful person. Along with using love potions, Yvonne also attends services that are held on the top floor. George, who is one of the Botanica readers, takes part of these sessions using one of his other gifts. Say I Santissimo. Say I. Say I Santissimo. Say I. Madre mia de la caridad. 
Santeria, like many other Afro-Caribbean religions, had been incorrectly labeled as Satan worship. Because of the stigma, some practitioners hide their worship, like George, who practices Santeria, but is employed as a singer by the Catholic Church. They don't know how to do this. There's a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of uh, fear about um, the these religious systems. Basically, it's because it's tainted into the preconception of it's all witchcraft and it's all black magic and it's all dark, which is not. Some of the misunderstandings come from animal sacrifices Santeros do during some rituals. The misconception is that we're a bunch of you know chicken killing fools. We actually save the chicken and eat it. You know, a lot of people got that idea wrong. I don't know about you, but if you live in a third world country, I don't think you're going to throw a goat out for just anything. You're going to cut it up and eat it, right? I know I am. Ochun is also offended by skeptics who say that the so-called psychic readers are just conning people out of money. The readers, however, will never guarantee that the readings will be right. Me, basically, I try to be as honest as I can. Of course, I always tell people I'm human, I'm not perfect. Um, I might be um, seeing something in the cards that I am misinterpreting and, and it doesn't come through. They all agree on one thing. They aren't here to convert anyone, just to help guide those who believe. If you don't have faith, if you don't believe in that there's something beyond our lives, beyond what you see and you can touch and what you can listen, then you will never understand.